Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Mike and uh, today I'm going to be working on my coupe for the first time in a while. Need some love and uh, mainly if you get the title of this, uh, this video, I'm working on the PCV and the crankcase ventilation system. Because what, what was happening, you know, I got the intake down here and you got your your vacuum lines off the bottom of the intake. They tee up, they go to the PCV valve on the back of the intake manifold. Well, every now and then I would have uh, the PCV valve pop out of the back of the intake manifold. So I just reach back there and I shove it back in and it would go for, you know, a couple weeks and then it would happen again, just kind of randomly. And I could, you know, really never put a lot of thought to it. But now that the car's down, I went, you know, back there and snooping around. To try to figure things out so i mean it's this is yeah turbo motor but i haven't gone through great lengths to deal with a lot of blow by that a lot of people have done with putting breathers all over the place and catch cans i mean this is still a stock bore low reasonably low mileage motor it only had like eighty-seven thousand miles on it from new and i put total seal rings on it with a click a quick hone before i put it all back together so blow by is absolutely minimal in this motor so i didn't take a lot of strides to dealing with all the excess crankcase pressure that a turbo uh, is going to make for you so but that's the only thing I was was dealing with was the PCV was popping out every now and then no excess oil consumption no other other big random issues uh, to go along with it so what I found when I went back there uh, took the intake off I just figured I needed to do a take it to the next level of what I needed to do to stop this from happening. And uh, I went back there, pulled the PCV valve out, stuck my finger in the hole for the little screen. Yeah, this little screen right here goes in the back of the intake manifold to uh, stop all the big bulk of the oil from coming up, blasting through the PCV valve. Well, this screen was gone. It had blown out of the back of the intake and who knows where it went off to. So this, because this was missing, was probably one of the reasons why uh, you know, I had a bit of excess oil consumption going on after the initial time it happening or two. I don't know when this thing came out. I was sometime last year when we we're driving around. So I figured I needed to take it to the next level because this was the, uh, the grommet that the PC valve goes into in the back of the intake. And I had to make it tighter. I wrapped it with electrical tape and shoved it in there. Well, the oil and temperature got to the electrical tape and it had started coming unglued and this is what the result of that was so this is another reason why i needed to pay some attention to this and not just slam it back together and head on down the road and cover my eyes and ears and with blinders and pretend like it's not gonna happen again so uh, i needed to do something so <laughs> what i got going on here is a smorgasbord of uh things i've been gathering together to try to see which road I want to go down. So I do not want to do things to this car that makes it, the engine compartment look unsightly with breathers all over the place, with sweat bands wrapped around the breathers to stop all the oil from spilling over and going on the valve covers and stuff and other you know, dumb stuff that you see other people do on turbo builds. I want it to look factory and right. And uh, yeah, I just have a, a pretense to for making things look and operate like they should come from the factory so this is the, the standard style you know the this is the hard line that goes from your passenger side valve cover to your throttle body well I, you can't really run one of these with a turbo setup because it'll just blow the turbo boost pressure right into the crankcase and over pressurize it that way so I got myself a big long piece of that same type of tubing and my plan is I took a factory air conditioning bracket for the accumulator that goes on the back of the firewall there by the heater core. I drilled out the spot weld, sandblasted the bracket and this is what I got. So I'm going to use this bracket on the firewall. I don't know if I'm going to mount it like this or like this, depending on where the catch can is gonna look pretty. And we're gonna mount the catch can straight to this bracket. 
I don't know if it's going to be like this or like this. I already tried putting the breather up top, but then it gets in the way of all the wiring harnesses, and I can't go any lower because that gets in the way of the turbo downpipe. So I think that this is going to be the orientation that it's in, and I'm going to just bolt it on with a hose clamp. In order to take this tank off, you know, I'll need to undo the hose clamp, but that's not a big deal. So, uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I couldn't tr not tr play with one of these things because, I mean, it was only like $22 or something like that on, on eBay shipped. So, I mean, I, I can't believe they can make these for $22. So, that's got what they do in China, I guess. But, yeah, I think I'm going to do that. Bend up a piece of this... Uh, nylon tubing somehow to go from the catch can to the same port on the valve cover and I think that's going to be the road I'm going down and then at the back of the intake manifold I have for the PCV valve grommet I bought these this big heat shrink so I'm gonna put a couple layers of heat shrink around this and build it up so it's not going to have the same delamination issues that the electrical tape had so once that's in place the pcv valve i was running a mustang turbo like thunderbird turbo coupe mustang svo pcv valve as recommended by another youtuber that you think would know a thing or two instead of just hacking stuff up but what i've found i mean this could be part of the problem is the EV127, that's the part number for the, uh, the turbocharged PCV valve. This doesn't have the flow it needs to process all the excess crankcase pressure from a V8, a period dot. You blow through this thing, yeah, you probably, you have no reference of what a PCV is supposed to flow or what doesn't until you, this is the proper uh, EV88, for a V8 Mustang. So, two to three times the amount of flow goes through this PC, the V8 PCV valves than the four cylinder turbo PCV valve. They both block off crankcase pressure under boost, but this the, uh, the mindset of you need to run a turbocharged PCV valve and your turbocharged Fox body going from four cylinder to V8, it can't process double the crankcase pressure from double the cubic inches and it's just not going to work right so that's if anybody's running at this and they're running into blow by problems it's probably one of your culprits because you probably have other breathers and things like that going on at the same time trying to cope with all the blow by so so that is not gonna go back in my car and i've even gone so far as i ordered one of these adjustable pcv valves from wagner performance and I have never delved into one of these before. And I don't even know if I want to try it. This thing is it's pretty devilishly complicated. But these guys have done a lot of research on it. The only thing is, I don't know how much this flows. It's got different circuits. One circuit for idle, one circuit for cruise. It's tunable to your specific engine. I mean, the instructions are, are amazing that come with this thing. You know, pages and pages of stuff. They got YouTube videos. They got different springs and different orifices and instructions, instructions, different baffle uh, spacers, Allen wrenches, extra screws. I mean, it's, it is a super comprehensive thing for a PCV valve. But one of the biggest pet peeves with hot rod ownership is, with me, is oil burning. And uh, these things have been known to cause a lot of problems. And these guys have engineered these PCV valves to hopefully solve these problems. They say they work great in turbo applications, but the only bad thing is location of the, this PCV valve being way at the back of the intake. And you gotta set up a, get it running and set up vacuum gauges and fiddle with these screws and then, you know, change stuff and lock it down. It's gonna be a real pain to put this on the car where it's at digging in behind all the wiring once the intake manifold is on. So this is my, my third string attempt 
at fixing a problem. So what I plan on doing, putting this catch can setup on, I'm gonna custom bend up a, a nylon line, try to make it all integrated. I put a little Ford sticker on this catch can because it has a oil catch can laser etched on the top here and I, I hate just seeing words and stuff like that on stuff in an engine compartment. So I just put a sticker over it to hide it. I'm just gonna hose clamp it to the bracket. This is gonna go to the intake and I think that's where I'm gonna wanna be. So yeah, I did, when I, I pulled it apart, I pulled the valve covers off and I always had a little bit of a drip on the passenger side and this is why, cause this is the way it was. And these two were the lower two on the passenger side caused all my issues. So I got new valve cover gaskets on there and uh, yeah, we're gonna get this thing back together here soon and see how it goes because I need to get this resolved before I try turning up the boost. Because right now it's just on a seven pound wastegate spring. You see eight pounds on the data log and stuff like that. So it's got a little bit of boost creep, but uh, I got my, my three port Mac valve. I'm gonna wire into the, the Terminator X. We're gonna go up the 10 PSI, then who knows from there, trying to max out this combo next year because uh, you know, like Pete's gonna get his car on the track. John's gonna have his car, you know, running strong. This year he's already run strong. He just got it registered. He's driving it around. And uh, I can't be the one uh, bringing up the rear. So uh, we're gonna get this thing going. So, but yeah, I'll get this thing smashed together and uh, hopefully it does what I need it to do. So, but other than that, yeah, garage updates. So I've been walking around this thing. So here's the 2.3 from the Thunderbird. So, and uh, we got the crank and the rods back from the machine shop just in for balancing. They did machine, I'll turn on the light here, the rear of the crank to fit the V8 pilot bearing. So there will be no issues when it comes time to, uh, to mount the transmission, the V8 uh, T5. So I got all this smashed together yesterday. It took me like just not even two, three hours to put it, you know, fork, crank in, rods, pistons, everything. All the bearings, clearances were already checked. All the rings were already gapped. So quickly threw it together. And then here it sits waiting on still valve springs for the head. Lost in shipping. Don't know the, since last year. You know, been, you know, five, six weeks now. I'm waiting on stuff to show up. I mailed some things to myself over the Christmas break. According to tracking, it disappeared on last update was the 3rd of January. So, and then the U.S. Postal Service, who can't put in a claim until 90 days. So I'm really, really pleased, you know, all those things I shipped to myself. We got Christmas presents for people in there and I got some car stuff in there that I wanted to get going and get on with some projects, but yeah, I'm, we're, we're stuck waiting on the mail. So it's not waiting for parts, it's waiting for the mail here. So, but this is uh, looking really nice. I got the, uh, the fellies getting the, uh, the washer for the crank because the, the one that was in it, here's the crank bolt that I cleaned up. But the washers, <laughs> these aren't like the proper hardened steel washers. I think this is for like a weld wheel, but this is uh, for a 302 or 289. But this, you know, how thick the washers are. These are hardened steel, so they don't bend like these stupid things. So, uh, but this is, you know, the bolt's too darn, too small. And I don't want to just trim the outside and try to put it on there and make it work. So, the guy who's injured this is, he said he's, uh, he's he sourced a, a crank bolt and washer, so that's on the way. And, uh, you know, whenever we get the valve springs, the head can go on. So I've been just putting pieces on it, trying to get them off the floor, making sure we have everything, you know, the tensioner brackets and the bolts and things, all these the valve trains got to get cleaned again before it goes together. But, uh, yeah, that's the progress in the, in the Fox's Abroad mic garage. So, uh, one other thing you'll probably see here come Wednesday, we got the X pipe. O2 sensor bung welded on and uh, so I can go straight on Pete's car 
I had to go online, research, download, and print the instruction manual for Pizza Super Sniper because the instruction manual that he got in the box was maybe 15 pages. And the real one for the Super Sniper, because it can do so much more, is 75 pages. So, but with this, I will be able to, to do the proper style of setup for wiring and all the inputs and outputs. And uh, so we're not sitting there on, on phones and tablets trying to, to look at instruction manuals and things like that while we're trying to put this thing together. Nothing, nothing beats a, a paper instruction manual sometimes, especially when you're talking complicated stuff like an EFI system. So, but yeah, so that's the garage update for the week. I mean, I do, I do more, get more videos out there, but we're just waiting on parts and the, whether it's out of stock or shipping, I mean, that's what we gotta deal with. So thank you for sticking along to the end. I appreciate you guys. Thanks for all the likes and subscriptions and uh, I'll hopefully get some good content for you here and I'll see you guys soon.